I'm from a mechanical engineering background, currently working as project assistant in Aeronautical Development Agency, overall or a five years of experience. After giving the mock, what I felt was I couldn't uh, perform as I expected in the verbal session, mainly in the verbal session. So the reading strategies provided by EGMAT was like the pause and, pause and comprehend. Uh, mm -hmm. They have given where to pause, where to comprehend and uh, summarizing each each of the paragraphs, each paragraphs or uh, strategic points. So those made uh, quite a difference being, oh, this was a small mistake. I, how could I miss it? Uh, how many traps are they? laying out and all but eventually on the exam day i understood that because of those traps i was very conscious in reading the questions and making sure that i will not fall into any traps hello everyone a very good morning good evening and good afternoon and welcome to another debriefing session with eg matt my name is abha i'm one of the mentors and senior strategy expert today we have with us gokul krishna who scored a 665 which translates to a 94th percentile so welcome gokul and thank you for joining in today thank you abha it's uh, great to meet you Yes. So, uh, Gokul, before we move forward and deep dive into your journey, uh, why don't you give us an introduction for our audience out here? So, I am. I have done my mechanical engineering. I'm from a mechanical engineering background, currently working as project assistant in Aeronautical Development Agency. Overall, or uh, five years of experience. Okay. Uh, so, Gokul, uh, coming from, you know, five years of experience and working as a project assistant, as you mentioned, right, and in the aeronautics field. So, uh, what made you realize that it's time that you wanted to go for a higher education and try for a GMAT at this point? So, in Aeronautical Development Agency, I was working, uh, I was working in a program office, okay. which oversees the development of uh, a compact aircraft. Okay. So, so looking at my seniors, uh, senior scientists, how they manage and the challenges, it quite uh, intrigued me to take up uh, such kinds of roles. Oh. So that is how I decided, okay, and an addition, uh, like addition of MBA to my career would be a great mix and I could benefit a lot from it. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So uh, Gokul, when you started your journey with EGMAT in the month of around November, Right. Uh, I recall you taking the first mock where you scored around 565 to begin with. Right. Yeah. I, I know it was a completely raw mock, but from that mock, what were the challenges or areas that you could identify that you would have to work in your journey? So I took the mock after uh, self-preparation from the OG material. Mm -hmm. uh, what I felt to, uh, then... After giving the mock, what I felt was I couldn't uh, perform as I expected in the verbal session, mainly in the verbal session. Mm -hmm. Even the quant and the DI, I felt there are a lot, some a few conceptual gaps, yep. which I felt I had to address it. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, the timing and the test taking strategies. So timing, I was not able to complete all of the questions. Uh, in the mock test so i knew i had to work on the timing part of it as well makes sense and uh you know what the interesting part is because uh, google now that you have completed the course we could eventually see that it's not just accuracy that improved for you but timing also you started managing by the end when you started taking the quizzes right so my next uh question to you is that in your rc right specifically in your rc there was a huge jump when we talk about accuracy right you when you started off initially you were around uh, you were scoring 55 percent to 60 percent in your overall scores but eventually it moved to a good about 80 percent accuracy so uh, so i wanted to understand what was the contribution of reading skills and how did it really help you improve your accuracy and reduce the timing aspect also in rc so the reading strategies provided by EGMAT was like the pause and, pause and comprehend. Uh, mm -hmm. They have given where to pause, where to comprehend, and uh, summarizing each each of the paragraphs, each paragraphs or uh, strategic points. So those made uh, quite a difference. Like it made me recall all those which I have read, just uh, rather than randomly reading some words. 
Hmm. They made sure that uh, those were kept in my mind. Uh, like I could recall them and uh, when needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that uh, then uh, even the main point, main uh, main point uh, consultation of all the summaries to main point also gave a lot of. Uh, uh, it helped me in recalling those uh, points which I required for the questions in the RC. So they were of great help. Yeah. So, Google, I, I think, uh, you know, definitely the strategy is worked out for you. But it is also we have to give you credit because you really did the course very diligently. Right. You put in those efforts and that is why, you know, slowly the strategies did become second nature to you. Right. Now, uh, for quants also, when we talk about your improvement uh, in, in the final test, you scored exceptionally well in quants too. And you have completed the entire course. You have gone at the pace enabled way, right? So w- what was that, uh, you know, a benefit that you saw for someone who is already strong in quants, right? For someone who is already decently strong, what was the benefit that you could derive from doing the course pace enabled? So, uh, because I knew that like each concept to learn concepts, it takes time and uh, the course in EGMAT focuses on the concept. So, not yeah. every concepts I needed to take. So the pace enabled way let me know where I had to focus. So mostly it was like it it has me it has asked me to focus on the process part on how to get the uh, how to answer the question rather than the concept. So that has helped me saved a lot of time in terms of my preparation and that was very much needed. Mm-hmm. So as you know my. Uh, Timing, like it was not as planned because of the college uh, deadlines. I had to take, uh, I had to take the, uh, I had to complete the uh, courses very soon. Yeah. So, pace enabled way has helped me strategize and uh, focus only where it is required. Yep. Yep. And actually, when I was looking into your account, you saved a good about approximately 22 hours as well. And, uh, you know, uh, when someone like a student who is preparing for GMAT, every day you're taking out those two, three hours. So 22 hours on a bulk make a huge difference. Right. And uh, so uh, when you talk about, you know, because I, I remember when you started off with the platform, you had created your personalized study plan where you had put some commitment of hours. Right. So why don't you share how many hours were you putting on a daily basis? And most importantly, how did you make sure that, you know, these hours are going productive? Right. You're effectively using these hours for your GMAT prep. So it's like. uh, um, Daily, it's like it's a lot of uh, you need some determination to go about uh, this is to make sure that you are uh, ensuring that you will uh, use those time productively. Yeah. What I benefit, what I observed was I started uh, doing some meditation as well. I used to uh, per uh, every day. I used to keep around half an hour for uh, meditation or yoga. So this has helped me improve my focus and reduce my timings uh, so instead of taking uh, three hours for a particular concept i was able to grasp that in one hour so another thing what i used to do was uh, write uh, taking down the notes so mm-hmm. after some three four days what i used to do i used to revise them so that i would be able to recall so initially even though it was taking some time eventually it was like instead of taking half an hour it used to take me 10 minutes uh, as time passes, like revision used to take less time. It ensured that I had uh, retained the knowledge, which uh, knowledge and the skills yeah. which I had uh, taken over through the course. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting point that you put out there that, you know, meditation helped you to improve your focus, right? And uh, I think this is something that many students can actually look into because it's very crucial that if you're sitting for two hours, you put it in the most productive way. And the only way to do it is if you're in the right mindset, right? If you're more focused. So I think that really, really worked out for you. So uh, Gokul, you mentioned uh, in the beginning of the interview that, you know, before your first mock, you had used uh, OG guide and OG material as well, right? Then you shifted to uh, the EG mat where you started using the scholarinium on the platform, 
right so what was the major difference that you found and what was that feature of scholarinium that you feel really helped you improve and get to your target score okay so the level of questions in scholarinium is uh, on a higher side i felt I personally felt it was on a higher side as compared to uh, the og material mm -hmm. and uh, another thing was uh, in uh, the scholarinium, scholarinium there were constant traps they were consistently they were you were putting traps to ensure that uh, like even uh, initially i did not understand like initially i was feeling frustrated saying oh this was a small mistake I, how could i miss it uh, how many traps are they playing out and all but eventually on the exam day i understood that because of those traps i was very conscious in reading the questions and making sure that i will not fall into any traps that uh, the paper setter has put up so it has helped me a lot M mainly the traps then even the cementing quizzes cementing session has helped me improve my accuracy and properly assessing me that uh, if i am able to clear or if i if i have if i'm using the strategy as uh, trained by eg mat uh, yeah. course Okay, so now since you have mentioned the cementing quizzes, right? Now, uh, this is something that might be uh, new for few people, right? So, uh, can you elaborate more on what are the cementing quizzes made of? Uh, so, after the courses, after the co coursework, these uh, cementing quizzes will, uh, in, uh, like we have around uh, two uh, two types of cementing quiz. One is medium and one is hard. Yeah. So medium level cementing quiz, the level of questions will be as such and we have to work through the questions. We have a fixed amount of time, a specified amount of time. And like I believe it's the ideal time we have to give in an examination mm -hmm. per question. So in that we have to apply all our skills. And if we are applying rightly we'll be able to clear those uh, cementing quiz if not we'll get uh, pointers on where to work how to work about it yep yeah i think you very well put it that you know cementing quizzes help us to identify our gaps right but at the same time like you said these are timed quizzes so they prepare you mentally also to a certain extent for the gmat timed environment right and uh, apart from this uh, you know since you have been you have been a very diligent user of the platform right you've used the scholarinium so how did data analytics, uh, did you use the data insights part of the platform and uh, how did that contribute to your success? Um, so I believe that uh, uh, I did not personally utilize the analytics part, mm -hmm. but uh, I had uh, requested support from my mentors in EGMN. So they have used it. I believe that they have used it because uh, from the suggestions which I got and the additional material to view how to improve the score it was very much uh, tackling my weak points itself so i i believe that it has indirectly helped me a lot even though i did not directly use it it yes. has indirectly helped me a lot. Yeah. So, uh, see, uh, that's very right. Because, you know, when you are stuck, your mentors, like in your case, I was your mentor, right? So we would make sure that we deep dive into your account where we look into the stats. And what the data insights basically help us do is it helps us to identify the particular topics where you really need improvement with respect to maybe accuracy or timing, right? So I think that worked out well for you because the result is phenomenal, as we can see. right? And what about, you know, because once you are done with the verbal because verbal was a major concern for you from the beginning so once you are done with the cementing stages like you said you are done with the scholarinium you move to stage three right where you start taking the mixed quizzes and then you slowly move to the mocks right so so what value did uh, the mixed quizzes uh, do for you and how did you go about prepping for the same um so yeah, uh, the mixed quizzes, uh, basically for uh, verbal, I utilize the mixed quizzes uh, because uh, uh, like it helped me understand, say, when we study in isolation, uh, CR in isolation, RC, we will be able to apply. But uh, when only when we utilize these uh, mixed uh, platforms, mixed quizzes, we'll, we'll really know whether we'll be able to apply that even if uh, we have a gap in the preparation or mm -hmm. 
something like this. some you are preparing for something else still will you have are you able to recall those uh, process those steps in order to enhance your score so yeah initially i remember around the two quizzes i was not doing uh, good mm-hmm. then i have put up a mail to you and you were like you have to you utilize uh, try one more quiz you have to utilize the processes mm-hmm. you have to try like that and yeah that uh, applying being conscious and applying those process in each and every question has helped me improve my accuracy mm. so what was the challenge uh, like you mentioned initially you weren't able to score right but later it did work out for you so what was the major challenge that you weren't applying the process so what was the gap there oh uh, well we i was aware of the process mm. but uh, the thing is when i started taking the test i start i not uh, recall that i have to utilize the process mm-hmm. i just try to do it just randomly so mm-hmm. it had increased the time for each questions and uh, yeah accuracy also it had affected mm-hmm. okay and uh, since you uh, did the data insights also right you have given the gfa edition and i know data insights is a very new section for people who are transitioning from maybe the gmat classic one to the gfe right so could you help us identify and understand what were your key tips to actually master the data insights section what should someone really keep in mind while preparing for di well uh, what basically i did was uh, the egmat stuff right from the start uh, you were asking me to go first quant then uh, first verbal then quant so what i had followed that process uh, very diligently mm-hmm. i made sure i am good at verbal then quant it had improved or uh, it will eventually improve what you require in the data insights mainly in uh, verbal all the cr cr and the reading strategies mm-hmm. to be careful of the traps everything and uh, same thing in quant as well so uh, frankly speaking i did not go through the data insights uh, coursework mm-hmm. but these uh, skills which i developed with verbal and uh, uh, quant sessions has greatly helped me improve my accuracy even in uh, data insights as well Mm. makes sense because uh, you know some of the skills like you said comprehending right it does help you indirectly it might not help you directly but indirectly in the data insights as well right now uh, coming to your test day experience because i'm sure a lot of students want to know about this right now in the gfe edition you can actually bookmark questions and go back and change right so did you use this feature and how did you go about understanding which question you wanted to bookmark and go back and change well uh, i used it like uh, for uh, verbal i had used it mm-hmm. uh, when i was not really sure of uh, a particular answer it's like okay. when i'm having a choice between two options Uh, this may be the answer then i would only, only then i would bookmark if i am unsure of the answer i wouldn't bookmark mm-hmm. or if i am sure of the answer i wouldn't bookmark so because uh, after the test you will hardly get around uh, maybe one or two minutes to revisit those questions mm-hmm. and uh, change the answer so in that time then learning you should be very careful in uh, what we bookmark mm-hmm. as well okay and w- what about your experience uh, gokul like how many questions like what was the sequence you followed in the test because there are multiple mm-hmm. sequences that you can take right now right so what was the sequence you decided to go and what was the reason uh, why you decided to go with that sequence well i prefer i chose the se- i it's the last moment i decided the sequence initially i had decided to go with uh, Uh, verbal first quant second and uh, di at last but uh, the last moment i read uh, some of the interview so one candidate from uh, egmat had scored 715 so i read his uh, interview so it was like he preferred to put his strength first mm-hmm. and then he would go about uh, the verbal and so i utilized the same sequence uh, i believe quant was my strength so mm-hmm. i st- started with quant uh, then i took the break right after the quant i took the break and mm. i just uh, settled my mind so that uh, i will go about my most hardest session which is verbal yeah. uh, 
I went through the verbal session and then the DI. I, I don't, it takes time like to decide which sequence works best for you. So I believe more, taking mocks with different uh, sequences will help identify which, which works best. Okay. Great. And I think it's very subjective also, right? Like you said, some people want to tackle their strengths first, while some people would uh, believe that if they start with a fresh mind, they want to go with their weaker section. So this is subjective, but I think you decided to go with your strength wants and yeah. that that eventually worked for you. So yeah. this is something that is slightly subjective from person to person also. Right? Yeah. And and what about your uh, time management, Gokul? Uh, like before the actual test, uh, did you take mocks to actually get acclimatized to the actual test environment? Well, unfortunately, I couldn't uh, get the time to take mocks. Mm. Uh, if it was uh, what I would suggest is if you are taking mocks, maybe if you have more than 10 days, then it is good to take mocks. So I was having less than five days to prepare uh, because as you like, it was not, uh, it did not go as planned. Like I yeah. couldn't, uh, uh, my preparation didn't go as planned. So uh, I didn't want to let my confidence down. So this uh, this time I preferred not to take the mocks. Yep. So that, yeah. 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 But here I would like to tell people that, you know, while you have not taken a mock mock, right? You know, your verbal stats and even your quants and data insights, right? They were indicating that you are on the right path. Right. So when mocks definitely help you get a full length experience, but these small, small data points at different stages, such as your verbal test readiness score, right, or your quant score, your cementing would tell you to a certain extent that you are in the right direction. Right. You're yeah. going in the right direction. So I think that also to a certain extent was helpful for you. Right. Even though you hadn't given the mock. So uh, Google, um, one last question for you would be that, you know, when you uh, look back into your journey. Right. So there'll be a lot of asp- or GMAT aspirants who are targeting, you know, a 94th percentile like you. Right. So when you look back into your journey, what would be the key takeaways that you would like to share it with other aspirants? So the basic thing which we need to get a high score is to be sure of, uh, to make sure that our concepts are strong. The foundation is very strong. So that will help us get some, uh, get a decent score. But yes, after the foundations are strong, we have to invest time in uh, making sure that we use those uh, knowledge right, rightfully. Yep. Like uh, test, uh, test taking strategies, uh, using, utilizing the test taking strat- strategies and uh, using, uh, trying for a harder questions, uh, diff- more difficult questions. I think, Oh, from my personal experience, I think we need to spend at least, uh, unless you are good with the conceptual part, we need at least uh, three to four months of uh, preparation is uh, really required if we have a support of uh, a coaching center like EGMAT. Um, and yeah, coaching institute alone will not uh, ensure you a good score. We have to do, do our ha- hard work as well. Yes. So I think that's very well put and summarized that, you know, at the end, yes, the resources are available, but how you leverage and utilize is something that is completely in a student's hand. Right. So, uh, Gokul, since you have been a very diligent user of the EGMAT platform, I would like to wrap up this session by asking you, what was that one feature that you really enjoyed using from the course? Uh, hey, so like before taking the course, I was not really sure that we can build on core skills. We can build on conceptual skills, but EGMAT's platform uh, helped in that. Even it was very interactive as well. It was not just someone who is giving lecture and we had to take notes. We had to interact with the computer. We had to interact. It was giving a very lively experience and helped me focus for a longer duration of the time. I believe that I really enjoyed from the EGMAT. That's great. That's great. And I think that's the purpose. That's why we are here. We love serving our students and, uh, you know, making the platform as comprehensive as possible so that the learning experience is good and they can achieve their target. 
right so mm-hmm. gokul uh, thank you really uh, for taking out the time today i think it was a pleasure interacting with you and i on behalf of the entire egma team would like to take this opportunity to wish you all the best for your applications right because i'm sure those are coming in line with your interviews and everything coming in place so all the best gokul and thank you again thank you for joining in today thank you thank you abha nice to meet you